Hello, my name is Ben Consalvo. I'm an AI software engineer at Intel. And today I'm excited to share with you about a LangChain application where we're leveraging um, model context protocol or MCP servers, as well as um, something called Intel AI for Enterprise Inference. And uh, we're, we're going to be building kind of a sample agentic workflow where we're going to be looking at a math server as well as a, a, a live weather server. I have some code in front of us, but before I, I get to a deep dive in the code, um, I want to just highlight a couple of the, the backend um, areas that we'll be, we'll be covering today. So the first one is the Intel AI for Enterprise Inference. And this is a service that um, we can use to ping model endpoints. And uh, we can deploy this on really any cloud environment. And uh, so it's, it leverages our Intel Gaudi or Intel Xeon products. So our, our accelerator Gaudi or the, the CPU on Xeon. And um, the nice thing with this architecture is that it's uh, compatible with OpenAI standard APIs. And uh, it's built on top of Kubernetes um, for orchestration. And uh, it's, it's a way that you can really um, very easily ping model endpoints to leverage the, the power of these large language models. So where, where is this hosted? It's, um, we have it hosted on one of our partners called Denver DataWorks. They're a cloud service provider. And um, they have a number of models that are supported, um, including LAM, the Llama models, the DeepSeq models, and Quen models that you might be familiar with. And uh, like I noted, it um, works with OpenAI APIs. And uh, so if you already are familiar with that um, API, then you can pretty quickly get started with this with very little code change. So I'll also be covering uh, LangGraph, LangChain, and the MCP integration with this LangChain MCP adapters library. Um, and the purpose of, of this is to be able to standardize how applications, like it says here, provide tools and context to language models. So it's essentially a, a protocol that's, that's standardized uh, where it can access tools and databases in a standard way uh, that really any agentic framework can, can use. Um, in this case, we're gonna be, like I said, looking at LangGraph and, and LangChain. And um, so some of the, a significant amount of the, the code Examples actually come from uh, the documentation on this web page, as well as um, one directly on the model context protocol site uh, for the the weather forecast that we'll be looking at. But yeah, we'll get we'll get back to that. But first, I wanted to go through some of the the code that I built to create this agentic workflow. Um, pretty pretty basic, um, but. Uh, what I'll start with is actually showing you the MCP servers. So this this is coming you know directly from this uh, web page that I just referenced. And it's a very simple math tool server that we're setting up. And really the purpose is um, just to showcase this connection between Lang, Langchain and, and MCP and, and setting up a, a server. To set up this server, all we have to do is, is run this, um, this code and essentially we're using something called fa FastMCP to build this and we're creating two functions, an add function as well as a multiply function. Um, and then we're hosting that server um, and it's just hosted locally and then we can just run this server. And we actually don't get any output you know, coming from the terminal but this server is running in the background. And then the, the other MCP server that I wanted to show you is um, a weather forecast server. The original, um, I guess, uh, documentation for the MCP examples on LangChain showcase a, a weather server. Um, and the weather server that they have just says it's always sunny in New York. Um, so I thought that was a little bit boring. So. I thought instead of deploying this weather server, let's deploy a little bit more um, complicated one that's actually pinging uh, a website and, and getting the, the weather information. 
So to do that, that's that's where I'm using uh, the code from from this model context protocol um, site and uh, using this api.weather.gov to ping like actual weather for a weather forecast for a location. So I'll, I'll make sure to include these links in the description, but um, essentially this is, yeah, this is our weather server server and there's a number of functions that um, we create, like make a, make a request um, to the weather server. Uh, this is if you want to, uh, th this is a helper function as well to format an alert if you want to have alerts uh, for, for certain weather events. And then the actual MCP tools, you know, we, we wrap in these decorators called at mcp.tool. And this is the get alerts function. Uh, so if we uh, want to get weather alerts for a certain state, then this is what, uh, this is how we would um, achieve that with this function. And then the next one is get forecast. So this is actually getting a weather forecast for a location. Um, and so it'll need latitude and long longitude to be able to do that. The power of using large language models in combination with uh, these functions is that it can translate, you know, the, the, the natural language that we prompt it with to, to, to whatever it needs for this function. So in this case, it'll need latitude and longitude, but I'm not familiar with the latitude and longitude of all the locations that I know that I want to get weather for but the large language model um, will help to uh, create those arguments for me. So the, those, are, those are the two main um, servers that we're going to be running. Um, and then even though they're running locally, this weather one will actually be pinging this, this API from api.weather.gov. And we can take a look at that uh, website as well once we run this. And what I'll make sure to do, so I, I ran the the math server, but I also want to make sure to run this weather server. Um, so that's both of those are now running in the background. And then we can go back to our, uh, our client.py file. And here um, I'm importing a number of uh, libraries you can see at the top here. Um, the, the, the core ones I would say to this application are Langchain OpenAI, the Langchain MCP adapters and LangGraph. Um, and the, the Langchain OpenAI, this chat OpenAI is, um, is where we'll establish our, like our model that we're, our chatting model that we want to use. And um, so to do that, uh, I'm getting an environment variable with my OpenAI API key. Um, so I've already put that in, into my environment variables in the, in the command line. Um, and, and then, so it, it's just fetching that. Um, and then I have a base URL, which is, uh, normally when you are going into like an open AI, uh, URL, you don't actually have to put this if, if you're just using the standard open AI, um, like chat GPT or, you know, GPT four models. Um, but because I'm using, you know, a custom endpoint, I have to put this in. So in my case, it's linking to this Denver DataWorks server, uh, but it's still using the OpenAI standard. With that, then I establish a couple of different models. Um, I'm going to be using a DeepSeq distilled llama model as well as a uh, llama, llama model. So I'm putting the names of those and then establishing those, those models here uh, with this chat OpenAI. So that's, that's one of the important frameworks that I'm using. And then this Langchain MCP adapters, this one I need to establish the actual MCP clients. And so I do that here with a couple of different clients, our math one, as well as our weather one. And, um, and I'm saying, yeah, they're running with Python with these, uh, these scripts. And then the last one is the create react agent with LangGraph. So this is actually the one that where I'm creating these, these agents. Um, and what I'm doing is I'm saying create a, a react agent. Um, and the, the react agent, it, it functions as a utility, like reasoning and acting is, is what that means using the, the LangGraph framework and 
um, it's, it's able to integrate a large language model with a set of tools. So you can see the two arguments here are like the model where I'm saying, you know, use this model DeepSeq and then use the tools that, uh, that I've established. So in this case, the tools that um, I'm using are the servers that I've already started up, the math server as well as the, the weather server. And you don't have to use these. You can use any M MCP server that's hosted anywhere. Um, these are just the ones that I'm, I'm using with this application. So then after I've created those, uh, those agents for Llama and DeepSeq, and I'm, I'm telling it, you know, these are the tools you can use, then I'm just giving it a very broad prompt uh, called, like here I'm saying determine the solution of this math problem 3 plus 5 times 12, but I'm not telling it um, necessarily to to use the tool, so it has to make a decision, the LLM has to make a decision about whether or not it wants to use the tool, and then it has to formulate the, the arguments in order to, um, you know, call, call this tool properly. And then I'm just giving it a response, and I have this, this um, json.dumps, and with this two serializable helper function up at the top, um, and this is just to make the the output a little bit more readable <laughs> in the in the terminal window um, and, and we'll see we'll see that in a minute as we as we run this and then the the next one is the the weather response so here I'm prompting it with what is the weather forecast in Houston Texas and then that's clo close to where I live um, and so then we get a weather response with the the JSON coming out of that as well so what I'll do is I'll go ahead and run this and we'll see how these agents work to, um, to get the responses. So the, the first model that we're using is the, the DeepSeq model, the DeepSeq distilled llama model. What we can see from the output here, you know, we have the content of determine the solution and then uh, the content coming back from the language model is let's evaluate the addition in the parentheses first uh, to get to eight and then multiply. And then to find this using the functions, saying perform addition first, then multiply. And um, it is providing the actual parameters to the addition fun or the add function, um, and then the multiplication function, and then giving us a final result of 96. So it looks like it's working and it is actually calling the tools, which is good. And then the the next tool call is, uh, or the next thing I've asked is, what is the weather forecast in Houston, Texas? So let's see what it came up with. So it, it seems like it, it did do a tool call here, um, and it's, it's using this get forecast, which is one of the functions in that MCP weather server, and it's provided latitude and longitude, which is great. Um, it means it's hopefully doing the right thing. And then let's see what, what content it comes up with. So it says that it, the, the current temperature is 90 degrees Fahrenheit, and then five to 10 miles per hour forecast, the chance of showers and thunderstorms after 1 p.m., mostly sunny, uh, southeast wind five to 10 miles per hour uh, wind. So it's, it's giving us a, a live weather forecast. And uh, what I'll do is I'll pull up the, the website for this weather.gov and show you that I, I had searched for Houston, Texas. And when I look at the today's forecasts, you know, I can see it here. It's pretty small, make that a little bigger. A 30% chance of showers and thunderstorms, mainly between one and 4 p.m. High near 90, southeast wind five to 10 miles per hour. So it's matching what, what it's found on this, uh, this, this website. And it's, it's just been pinging the, the API that this weather.gov has, this api.weather.gov. Yeah, so that's, that's pretty neat. Um, so I was able to come up with um, an MCP, a couple MCP servers here and, and host them locally on, on my computer, and then be able to ping those with these agents using natural language understanding. So the, the agents recognize, you know, the, the question at hand and then identify the tool, the appropriate tool, um, because they can select from a number of tools to be able to, to use. And in the case where, you know, you might not have a, a tool that your uh, agent can take advantage of, the language model is going to try to answer the question on its own. Um, 
So, but where you do have tools, it might, it, it can sometimes give you a better answer, a better response because it's um, maybe using something that's faster uh, and, and more accurate. So in the case of the, the weather, certainly when you call on a, a model that's been trained and has a cutoff date, say, say the cutoff date is 2024, um, or just any previous date, then you're not going to be able to get a current weather forecast with your with your agent. So um, by using the the tools that you give it, you can uh, you can get more up to date information. Thanks for joining me today. You can connect with me on Discord. Uh, Intel has an Intel Dev Hub Discord server, so I'm on there, and then I'm also on LinkedIn. So I'll put those links in the description, and. Um, be glad to, to see your builds and your comments uh, based on some of what we saw today with Langchain, Langgraph, uh, this, this MCP servers, and this agentic workflow. Um, so with that, happy coding.